Welcome back guys, what is going on? This is video number 11. One second. Oh, that's better. I'm sick again, amazing, right? Yeah, I know, um, but I didn't wanna wait any longer to bring you guys another video, so pardon my sickly sounding voice. All right, so the first thing that I wanna go over right now is I added a new file to our website template that I have on our Google Drive that you got in video three that I posted a link to. And I'm gonna post another link down in the description um, to take you actually right to the scripts folder. And cause I'm gonna just open this up real quick and jump into the scripts to show you what I've added here. And this is actually the file I've added. So, I mean, we can preview it here. Um, essentially what this is, is it's just called include.js. And I, I use that essentially just include it whenever I start a new project because it has a ton of useful functions on it that, you know, I've collected over my time and the projects that I've worked on. I just, they're just functions that I've used. I'm going to go ahead and include that in there. So if you're, you know, following along up until now then you'll have to jump in there and copy this you know file and put it in your scripts folder um otherwise if you're watching you know after the date um then you have it in your folder already because it's in there now so and then we're what we're gonna do is i'm gonna jump right over here into the code and what we need to do first to make sure you're set up with that include file because I won't have had the HTML updated, at least not as of this video. So what we're gonna do here is actually go and just, I'm just gonna duplicate a line here and we're actually going to just add that include.js. So now you should have access to all of those functions that are in there. And what we can do now is because there are functions in there already for some of the stuff we have in here. Um, we can go ahead and get rid of these functions on the bottom because those three functions are actually included. So as long as you have that JS file included on your HTML and make sure it's in the folder, you can go ahead and delete these functions on the bottom because those are actually in that file. So you'll just be duplicating code there. All right, so now that we have that include in our scripts folder, which I have just added, um, we can actually look through some of these functions that we have here. Uh, I'm not going to explain what a lot of them do. I'll explain them to you as we get to them and actually use them. Um, what you can do in brackets actually is if you hold or do command one, it'll minimize all your functions for you. So you can kind of look at the, uh, you know, the names we have here. <clears throat> some of them are pretty self-explanatory. Others, you know, we'll get to later. But in this case, we're only concerned with one right now, and this is this variable actually, which is called ease. And ease here is just a small collection of easing functions that I've gathered, ones that I use. These are really useful, and most of the ones I use, or most of what I'm using for this game is actually the out expo. And essentially what this is, is it's just, you know, if you open this up, it has a return value here. It takes four parameters, we're gonna go over those. And then it returns a single value. And essentially what this value is, is it's whatever amount at the current iteration. I'm gonna explain that actually right now. So basically what happens is you have a current iteration, you have a start value, you have a change in value, and then you have total iterations. So the idea here is that if we jump back real quick into our main JS, and we run into here, essentially what we can do now, say for instance, we wanted to animate the opacity of something over time. Well, we could say opacity, if we wanna fade it in over, you know, not just a linear, but we wanna fade it in over that out expo or, you know, that out elastic um, easing function, then we could say set op variable op opacity equals ease and then, of course, we have access to all of these here, but we'll just say out expo. 
And then what we do is this takes four properties now, remember, and they're all numbers because you have your start iteration, which essentially is your frame, whatever frame you're currently on. So in this case, it would be the universe.focus.frame. The next part would be where you want it to start from. So if it's you want it to fade in, then obviously it's gonna have an opacity of zero. So you're gonna go from zero, and then the next number can be confusing sometimes if you forget. It's not the end value, it's the change in value. So if you want it to go to one, it would be one in this case, which is also the end value, but it's the end value, essentially you're adding one to zero. So if this was another number, for instance, like if I wanted to fade out instead, then you would put one here, but then you wouldn't do zero because that's, you know, if you're not, if you're doing zero, then it's not going anywhere. The change would be negative one because you're going from one down negative one to zero. So we'll just leave that for now. And then of course the last value in here would be out of how many total frames this is running so that we know how many frames to call it over and what point on the line of the graph this will be on at any given frame. So you could take that and then remember it returns a number. So it's gonna, um, in this case, going to over those frames return a number between zero and one. It's just not gonna be a straight line, you know, so you're not gonna be expecting over 10 frames for it to be 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. It's gonna be, you know, out expo. Um, I think it starts off fast and then it slows down toward the end. So you're gonna be looking at something, you know, the numbers are gonna be going really quick and then they're gonna kind of, the amount changing is gonna get slower and slower toward the end. So we have that. And now simply, if you wanna use it, you just do what we've been doing up here and stuff like that. Just, you know, call whatever element you wanna set it to and then you just set the CSS property for opacity and then there you go, you've got your fade and whenever you call this now, it'll fade that in. But of course we're not doing it this way because we're not animating opacities. But actually we'll cut this video short because I have just covered the easing and now you guys have a really good understanding of how that works, hopefully. And if you don't, of course, you know, ask questions in the comments and I will get back to you. But um, in the next video, we'll actually apply it. So you learned what it is and how to use it now we'll figure out how to actually apply it to what we're doing here so we can get you know that nice smooth animation back to different places that we want you know and we'll use that for all our animations so it's gonna it's gonna look really nice rather than having like a slow you know ugly looking you know linear animation so um stick around for video number 12 and i will do that very soon because i know you guys are going to be anxious to apply this new stuff so thanks guys for the support again and make sure to subscribe and like the video and I'll see you guys next time.